Hi everyone and welcome to this session. Um, I'm Cheryl Hung, I'm the VP of Ecosystem at the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. And today we're going to reveal the results of the November's edition for the CNCF End User Tech Radar, which I'm really excited by. So let's take a look. Um, basically, what I do at CNCF is I work with end users to get them engaged and active in the ecosystem so that they can successfully adopt technologies like Kubernetes and Prometheus. You can find me at Boy Cheryl on Twitter. And these are some of the companies that I work with. So this ranges from startups to large enterprises, um, all fantastic companies that are using cloud native. And I'm very honored to be joined by three of them here today to talk about the CNCF end user technology radar. So I would like them to each introduce themselves. So first of all, we have Jackie Fong. Please introduce yourself. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Jackie Fong. Uh, I work at Mass Ticketmaster for the last three years uh, as their uh, engineering manager, uh, leading their Kubernetes platform team and CI CD team, observability, and most recently developer experience. And uh, we de developed the platform uh, for our developers to consume. And recently we migrated our self-managed Kubernetes to EKS. Uh, at the beginning of 2020, uh, with Show's help, I kickstarted a uh, service mesh end user group with CNCF as a co-chair. So happy to be here. Great. Thank you, Swain. Hi, I'm Swain. I'm a DevOps team leader at Dailymotion, which is a, a dis video distribution platform, basically, uh, pretty famous in France and Europe. Uh, in this, in, at Dailymotion, I'm leading a team which is in charge of uh, the cloud native platform. This, this platform is a hybrid platform, mostly on premises, and we have uh, some stuff on, on cloud. Uh, and we are responsible of the whole de developer experience too, from the laptop, the CI CD, to the, how they ship their, their application to the production. And also uh, the, um, the organizer of the CNCF Paris meetup and the CS CNCF ambassador. And I'm nice to, I'm glad to be here too. Fantastic. Maya, you're next. Hello everyone, my name is Maya. My pronouns are she and her. I'm a former principal engineer who worked on Indeed's compute storage and observability platforms. I recently left and joined a small startup called FX. I'm happy to be here. Awesome. I want to say thank you to all three of you for coming together to be the radar team and be the editors for this edition of the Tech Radar. So just a reminder, the Tech Radar is a way of assessing upcoming solutions and different technologies. So the idea is to pick which tools you would recommend to place in Adopt. In other words, they're mature and they're stable. They've been used by many different teams, many different use cases. Or you could put it in trial, which is to say that, you know, it's there's some success, but may not be applicable in all cases or assess, meaning it's up and coming, or maybe there are other solutions for different use cases. So the topic of this radar is database storage and database storage is very close to my heart because I used to work for a storage vendor. So I want to ask you to the radar team, why did you choose database storage for this radar? Uh, maybe. Uh, I would start by saying that um, I was wondering how was the adoption in the CNCF end user community in this particular area, because uh, the CNCF community is pretty mature on the Kubernetes platform and, and maintaining and the evolution of the Kubernetes platform. But I, I wanted to know how databases uh, fit in this, in this cloud native domain. I know on the Indeed side of the world, as we started to shift more and more of our workloads to the cloud, I, we were really interested in 
how people were running their databases, whether they were choosing to go manage services or running a cluster and um, what kind of some of the technology decisions that went into that for, um, as well as how they were handling some of their scale out. Yeah, I'm pretty uh, similar. Uh, would love to pick the community spring. Uh, we've been migrating our on-prem uh, presence to the cloud uh, on the database front. We have legacy systems running on Oracle and just looking forward to get some insights from the community and uh, some experiences to migrate out of either Oracle or onto Oracle on the cloud. So super excited for this topic. I'm definitely excited to see the results for this. So just a reminder for how the technology radar is put together. Um, we created a Google spreadsheet with a list of different tools. Um, this was not exhaustive, so people can add their own extra tools in as well. And then we asked each company to add a column for themselves and choose whether within their own company, they recommend that these tools are adopt, trial, assess, or hold. So hold explicitly here doesn't mean um, we don't use it or we don't have it at all. Hold means we might have it, but we don't recommend that new applications use this technology. And then here we've got some of the, the companies that have contributed to the results of this and probably a sort of slight bias towards the medium and larger size companies overall. All right, here we go, ready for the results. Actually, before we do that, let's talk about what did you expect? So what did you think was going to come out from this? Gosh, where do you even start? Uh, I kind of expected a lot of people to like continue using the technologies that they were familiar with, um, just because you already have a lot of expertise on it from the engineering side. You don't have to rewrite applications, um, good compatibility there. Yeah, I expect Oracle, uh, like I mentioned Oracle earlier, to be up there as well. And uh, for most of the companies that has entered into, uh, information in there, they keep, most of them said on, on hold or, 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 or recommending it to, to be on hold or phased out. So that was surprising. But um, otherwise, most of those are pretty in line with what we've been using. And uh, I was expecting uh, much more uh, experiments on new uh, cloud native databases. This is something that we will see later on, but uh, I, want, uh, I wanted to see because we worked on the POCs at Dailymotion to identify our next uh, database, cloud native database, and I was expecting that many more companies will do the same uh, experience. Okay, so that's quite interesting. We've got a wide range from, you know, we expected Oracle DB to we expect super new technologies. Okay, so let's actually look at the results. It's just a reminder again here, green is votes for adopt, the blue is for trial, yellow for assess, and then gray is for hold. Um, and then we took probably the top 15 or so answers that we had. Um, Oracle, I believe, was not, didn't end up in here, right, Jackie? No, it's, um, yeah, it was way down there from a, um, a responses perspective as well. Yeah, Maya, you were going to say something. Oh, uh, <laughs> I don't think I was going to say much, but uh, I think it was, I don't know, like I said, to, to my expectations earlier, I kind of expected people to stick with the technologies that they were comfortable and familiar with. And I felt like the results kind of showed that, right? It's people definitely are so a lot of, yeah. yeah, a lot of well-known names up at the mm -hmm. top. Um, so when we came to choosing which ones ended up in adopt, trial and assess, I think these are just kind of bucketed like this. Um, I know there was a little bit of discussion about some of these items. Were there, are there any here that you use or you thought were, you know, personally you would put in a different place? 
at Daily Machine, we are heavy users of MySQL. This is uh, the, our main database. And yes, uh, I can see that most of the ADAPT uh, technologies, we are using them, except using uh, Postgre PostgreSQL, because we chose uh, MySQL. We use MongoDB pretty heavily at Indeed. Uh, and that was one of the things that I thought was really interesting to fall into the trial bucket. Um, but there was a lot of people that kind of like marked it as like hold, don't quite adopt yet. And, and so it was kind of an a interesting experience to see that. I remember Jackie, when we were doing this, you thought that Postgres, you were surprised that a lot of people were using Postgres, right? Yeah, I mean, way more than MySQL, as you can see here. Uh, we've been, we migrated up, not a ticket master, my previous place, I believe, ooh, 20 years ago. We migrated off of Postgres onto MySQL. And since then, I've been working with MySQL almost every place I work for. Uh, but recently, at, at uh, Ticketmaster, Postgres came back. I mean, at least from a vendor supported uh, service they provided, and Postgres SQL was the backend. So to me, that was a little bit surprising, especially looking at the results here that Postgres is wide, more widely adopted than MySQL. Can you go into a little bit more detail? Like why why did you migrate off Postgres in that previous world? And then why- That was a back? long time ago. Uh, our main database, I, w I work for uh, ISP. Uh, that was when, you know, when we have dialed-ups and DSL. I'm aging myself here. Uh, and, and basically it was our main registration application. And it was really heavy at the time. People were signing up left and right and supporting Postgres SQL was just too heavy for us. And we're looking for an open source um, database that we can migrate to. It, was, it wasn't it was an easy effort. Uh, when I left, they were still uh, finalizing the migration and my SQL at that time worked for us. It was super light and the operation cost for my SQL is so much lower than Postgres SQL. And, finding expertise at that time. Uh, we call them, you know, DBAs, right? Finding expertise for MySQL at that time was so much easier than Postgres DBAs. So that's um, when we made the decision. And on the application side of the world, Postgres didn't handle updates as well as MySQL. And so when people were doing updates and it needed to kind of update any indexes, there was a cascading write problem, which kind of had performance considerations. Um. Yeah, in fact, I think we talk in a little bit about how the diff how difficult it is to move between databases. So I think actually we should go into that. Yeah, so I asked you to sort of come up with some thoughts about what themes or patterns did you see not just from the data, but from your own experience. So Maya, why don't you talk about this first one? Yeah, so one of the big things that I had noticed with a lot of our cloud migration is a lot of, we're really cautious with our data and we tried moving from database A to database B and there's obviously a lot of overhead involved when you have to move like petabytes or terabytes worth of data from one data storage technology to another. Um, I remember running math to try to figure out what kind of like write workload capacity we needed to stay on top of our writes for the day. And there was just a lot there to take into consideration. And uh, we ended up like not choosing to adopt any new technologies, but even in our move to the cloud, we're still kind of considering like keeping the same things that we're familiar with. Um, we have a lot of operational excellence uh, around things like MySQL. Uh, as well as all of our applications are programmed against that. So it's, you know, the, the cost of switching from one technology to the other often has a high, a high tax to pay. Um, right. That's actually also what you mentioned in terms of the hiring, right, Jackie, the yep. finding people with skills. And, and a lot of engineers, when we interview them, they're looking for you know, challenges, uh, new, the next new shiny toy to play with. And, you know, when they hear about Oracle or when they hear about running on-prem, they, they, they shy away. And a lot of times company make decisions 
you know, based on some of those responses and newer technology, it's sort of attraction, right? Uh, to work for a company and, and whatnot, like my going to a startup, it, it's a, you have to choose. You don't want to choose legacy systems uh, and, and technologies. And, and that's why um, the newer uh, technologies should, should be there. I mean, it shows on our radar too, so. Um, Swain, you said you're in the middle of looking at a change right now at Daily Motion, right? Um, can you talk a little bit about the challenges that you've seen there? Oh, you're on mute, sorry. Yes. Still on mute, I'm afraid. I don't know why. Okay, so, okay, so I was I was saying that uh, at the Dimotion, I'm as I said, I'm in charge of the DevOps team, and uh, my team is uh, responsible of giving the main building blocks. I, I would say for a developer to uh, to build his application architecture, and uh, one of the the pieces we want to provide is to provide an easy way to to uh, bootstrap a, a database system, database uh, software. And uh, we were looking at uh, the cloud native alternatives in the in the market, and we did POCs uh, last year in order to ch to choose uh, the one that fit our needs. And we are pretty uh, happy because uh, some of our internal tools are currently running in production on that uh, solution. Do you mind like sharing what that one was? <laughs> Yes, we, we are working uh, with TidyB, TidyB type TV and we we deployed it in production for internal uses. How has it been working with it out of curiosity? How is it uh, how is it working today? Working with oh. TIDB coming from like the, the I guess like your previous standpoint. Yes, well, we did that shows because because we did a lot of performance tests, tests and uh, reliability tests. We did chaos testing using the, uh, the tool named the Chaos Mesh. We, uh, we uh, pushed a lot the, the solution to be sure that it handles uh, uh, our traffic, uh, big traffic, because we, 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 have the, we have the target to, to have a, a lot of traffic in this platform. And, uh, and we, we made everything uh, to, to be uh, production ready. So we have backups, uh, uh, regular backups, scheduled backups. The TideDB operator is pretty amazing because it, it allows you to uh, define really easily how you want to declare your, your, your database. It, and, uh, every, and all the observability features are really amazing in this uh, in this uh, solution, I was I was pr pr pretty um, uh, surprised by by the maturity of this solution because it's not known, uh, really known. But uh, when we did our tests and uh, compared to the other solution, this is uh, the one we shot. Okay, I think let's go to the second theme out of three. Um, choosing a managed database service depends heavily on your use case. Smain, do you want to talk about this one? Yes, uh, actually, uh, when we uh, when we we've seen the results, we were pretty surprised by by the um, the the fact that uh, managed services were not uh, too too much adopted. Uh, we were expecting that. Uh, there will be much more adoptions with the, the managed database services. Uh, but uh, actually, uh, when we talked about that, uh, it depends. It depends on the uh, the company use case and when where the application is deployed. What is the cloud provider? And sometimes uh, the database just run on premises. Uh, so that's why uh, maybe th that can explain why we uh, don't see. Uh, much more adoption in this area. Yeah, I mean, one of our use cases, our database is at the biggest one is on-prem. And one of our initiatives for our developers is migrate their workloads to the cloud. In the East region, it's great. The cloud 
uh, AZ is pretty close to our on-prem data center there, but on the west side, it's 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 you know it's too far, and we constantly hitting some latency issues, and that's where our use case is kind of a little bit different between our east and our west uh, regions, and so that's where we're still looking into what are the alternative as we move off of on-prem from Oracle to 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 anything out there that's you know may not be just one to one uh, migration. We are looking at multiple solutions. I know that when we were diving in, we looked at things like Elasticsearch for an example and comparing like our on-premise configuration versus the cloud configuration that we could get from something like AWS and did some pretty heavy performance testing against it and found that we could run Elasticsearch not only cheaper than what like AWS was offering, but also like with higher performance. And so we did a lot of things like that when we were diving in. Um, I think when we were doing that evaluation, we were on EC2 instances and not necessarily running in Kubernetes, but um, it was something that was like, we, we kind of, again, kind of take to heart when we look at some of this stuff and like really try to take our, our use cases into consideration. Uh, we also had like another ephemeral testing type of um, effort in place where people wanted to be able to spin up kind of like feature branches for, you know, service X and then have a database that's kind of fresh and brought up and then torn down when that feature branch is deployed and using like a managed service for something like that can be really heavy and really difficult to kind of get built into that workflow. And that's where we started looking at more things like running it in cluster alongside the service that you're trying to deploy. Um, yeah, I mean, some of our developers even run their own MySQL within Kubernetes instead of using RDS. Uh, it's kind of find that interesting, um, even though they are running on EKS. <laughs> so different use cases um, really depends. That's actually a really good point because RDS was one of the options that was in here. It, it was one of the answers that was there, but it didn't end up in the final radar. Why is that? Well, I mean, it, it, it's vague, right? When we when, when I said RDS, uh, which uh, database are we talking about? MySQL, Aurora, right? Or even Oracle is there as well. So we took that out, and uh, because you, I mean, some of the users, you know, they 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 answer, they adopt RDS, but within RDS, there are you know five or six. That um, that they can choose from. So we took that out. It's kind of vague from from that sense, and it's very you know AWS specific. And we try not to uh, you know um, like similar to Oracle, right? Try not well, not similar to Oracle, but we try to take the vendors out and be more um, what's the word uh, non vendor specific. Let's just say. Okay, great. Um, I knew that was a question that people were going to ask, like, where is RDS? So figure let's, let's get it out of the way. Um, let's go to our third theme. This was just keep an open mind. Um, Jackie, what does this mean? Yeah, uh, and the reason why this subject was, you know, uh, while filling out the radar, uh, I get a chance to talk to our database team and they're new to Kubernetes and we've been trying to work with them to migrate their uh, services onto the cloud and most of the time onto Kubernetes as well. And some of those engineers are Oracle DBAs uh, and we try to talk to them about you know, migrating venture into new technology and don't, don't settle for the first one they looked at and uh, reach out to industry like experts, like people here, right? Uh, Maya, Smi, and the community and see what their experiences are and learn from that before we you know, decide on our own. So keep an open mind on what's out there. And this radar really open up some of our eyes. That reminds me of a point Maya, you were making earlier. You said that cost and performance were some of the things that you were looking at. So were there other things or maybe you can go into performance a little bit, like what 
Do you remember what the things were that you were looking at? One of the big things I think in kind of this space of like keeping an open mind, right? Like a lot of pieces of technology are coming out that are better suited for certain use cases and kind of keeping that in mind. So we have a pretty high right high write throughput when it comes to things like processing candidate applications or our job aggregation funnel. And so we needed to make sure that whatever database technology we cho chose could handle the, the right throughput. So uh, with the way like CockroachDB works, for instance, um, it has a single node that can accept writes at any time. And so we found like that wasn't scaling well for a lot of our write heavy use cases. Um, and so we needed something that was a little bit more, I don't know, federated to some extent. Um, even things like I said earlier was like protocol compatibility where it's like a lot of systems are written against MySQL or some piece of technology and going through and trying to like redo a lot of that code to then work with something like Postgres or another kind of protocol. It, it's a lot of work on our engineers and we don't necessarily want to put that kind of toil on them. Uh, and that was one of the other things that we had found with like the test was um, it didn't handle some of the prepared statements that we were using quite as well. And it kind of, again, forced our engineers to kind of go and reconsider like how their code was being written. Um, so we were trying to find something that was more, you know, drop in and replace versus we need to burden our engineers with going and fixing that. Swain, maybe you can talk a little bit as, about this as well, because you were saying you, you're you using TiDB, so you did choose a new technology. And I would say that uh, apart performances and reliability, there are other aspects, aspects to take into consideration. I would say uh, all the lifecycle uh, tools around the software solution, the database software solution, uh, I mean, how do you do backups? How, how do you dig uh, further when you have uh, an issue? Observability is really important and how you can get the more information from your system. Th these are some considerations to take into account too. And the adoption of the, uh, yes, the adoption of the uh, uh, so software, the open source, so so most of them are, are open source and we need to take into uh, consideration how the community is uh, is maintaining and how it's growing and what is the adoption uh, of the uh, open source project so you mentioned you're 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 using tidyb now right yeah so the community community backing was part of the decision making for you yes uh, we had a look to the uh, to the um, activity in the repository to the uh, number of, of, of contributors, the, the, uh, the number of stars, obviously, and, uh, and uh, the, the way we can uh, ask for support, to the way we can talk with the community. And this is something we took into consideration too, when we, we tried the solution. Jackie or Maya, do you have I think, the left. I think one of the things I had for, I don't know, this section was, it was really surprising also to not see graph databases picked up a little bit more. There's a lot of cases where like a knowledge graph is really useful. And uh, the fact that like, I think we had Neo4j show up in there, but it was like the only one that people had and it fell really low. And there was maybe only a handful of companies that even voted for it. Uh, but it was again, like one of those uh, more interesting data points. Uh, kind of to that point or theme of keep an open mind, right? Like find the database that fits your use cases. No, yeah, I mean, uh, Maya and Smin, uh, you know, nailed it. Um, we, as we migrate from on-prem and supporting legacy systems, we need basically keep an open mind with, on what's out there, uh, venture into the unknown, right? Uh, a lot of times my team, uh, the engineers I have, Every sprint, we they, I see them picking the tasks that they are comfortable with. Uh, I keep basically telling them, you know, jump out of your comfort zone, uh, venture into something out there, and oftentimes 
try to contribute to the open source community as well when we bring in technology from there. So. Yeah, I of course I appreciate that given that I work at an open source foundation. Um, so let's just kind of look at the whole thing kind of in total. So what we ended up with in Adopt, it's MySQL, Memcached, Elasticsearch, Postgres, Kafka, and Redis. And then we ended up with another sort of six or seven here, and then in Assess, just a few. So actually, like, do you have any thoughts for people who are, who are looking at this and thinking, you know, if I have to choose a solution, today, you know, this doesn't mean like, okay, you have to choose something from this section, but um, do you have any words of advice for people? Reach out to your network uh, or join this community here and pick the brains. Uh, a lot of brain power, a lot of open source contributors here trying on new things and learn from each other. Uh, I, I learned a lot just talking to you guys here. Uh, and and so don't don't be afraid to reach out for help. Um, that's the biggest piece that I can say here. Spain, Maya. I'm trying to think of how to follow that. That was really well captured. <laughs> okay. Well, let me go to the um, just overall thoughts. How did you find? creating the radar? As, uh, as uh, Jackie said, we, I was really uh, appreciated to talk with you, uh, to share our uh, point of views. This is, this was really interesting. Thank you. And I learned a lot of things uh, I didn't expect, to be honest. Uh, and as Jackie said, uh, talking to each other is really important. I thought the allow radar me. process. Oh, sorry, so, go ahead, Jeff. Sorry, man. No, I was going to say, allow, gave me a chance to reach out to teams that I have not talked to for a while, especially the, you know, and this time. Uh, and most of my team work from home, anyways. So I reach out to a database team and pick their brain for a while to, to help me build this radar. Having been like so engrossed on our persistence platform side of the world, I was pretty familiar with kind of the Indeed side. Um, Filling in that information wasn't too bad for me. The things about the radar process that I thought were really interesting was it was kind of difficult at times to figure out like, well, should this go into adopt or should this go into um, trial? I think Kafka is one of those really interesting ones where it's like a lot of people said adopt, but there were still like a few other folks that were like, uh, hold on Kafka. And it was kind of interesting that people were submitting hold. And um, so there's kind of some context there I felt that was missing. and having some of that context probably could have helped us make better determination about like whether or not something could go in the adopt versus trial category. Um, and that's kind of where we've typically leveraged comments pretty heavily of um, like, this is how our use case of this is. Um, I think I had put Cassandra in there as an example of like, we did a trial deployment of Cassandra a long time ago. And even though we wound up on a hold for Cassandra, um, you know, there's a lot that can go into that, right? How was it deployed? Was it deployed with like open configuration or were we recompiling it to things internally? Um, given Indeed comes from an on-prem model, like we were most likely taking like whatever was out in open source and rebuilding it, running on Cent OS and trying to go like our own way versus kind of using the well-known configuration provided by the community. Awesome. I mean, I want to say thank you to all of you, Maya, Smain, and Jackie, because I've really enjoyed working with you and I'm very, very interested and excited to see the results of this. Same here. Thank you to everyone here. Just a reminder, so you can go to radar.cncf.io and read about this in more detail and take a closer look at the projects. And if you want to get involved, then we want to find out what do you want to hear? You can go to this link, cncf.io slash tech-radar. Um, that just redirects to a GitHub, GitHub issue where you can vote on things that you want to see for the next version of this radar. 
Uh, if you want to come in and be part of the radar team, like Jackie and Swain and Maya, or you want to contribute your viewpoints, then please come and join the end user community. We'd love to have you. And if you have thoughts about how this could be better, then please send your feedback to info at cncf.io or just to me. And that is it. I want to say thank you once again to all three of our radar team today for putting the work and the time into this. So really appreciate it and really appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. Thanks, Cheryl. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl.